All right, let's get started. I put these down just as a reminder for you guys, um, especially as we get older, it's hard to do little fine detailed work and a pair of reading glasses has really been helpful. I keep a pair in um, my go bag, my communications uh, grab bag, and um, any kit that I think I'm gonna need some extra magnification. So uh, just a reminder that these can be helpful. This is what we're gonna be making. This is the long wire shortwave antenna. The important things to take a look at here are the ends of the wire. So on one end we have the mono plug to plug into the radio and stored on a long piece of heat shrink tubing just for um, support and strain relief but also a place to dock two nylon barrel uh, clamps and I use those as strain reliefs when I'm hanging this wire from a cord and at the other end you'll see a ring eye crimped on and supported with several wraps of heat shrink tubing for strain relief. The whole assembly is wound up on this winder by buddy pole and then secured with a piece of paracord and another nylon slide clamp. So that's the entire rig right there and we're going to make one right now. Let's start with the end that goes up in the uh, tree opposite the radio. You want to terminate it in some kind of loop so you can attach a cord to string it up. My preference is to use a crimp on eye ring supported by several overlapping layers of heat shrink tubing for strain relief. On the more simple end of things you can just tie a simple overhand knot that works just as well, requires no extra expense or equipment. In my mind, I think this just provides a nicer finish and a little bit more durable in the long run, but either one of those will work just as well. All right, let's start by putting the eye on the end of the wire. Now, I always have little bits and pieces hanging around, and I organize them in little clear uh, bottles. In this case, we're going to grab one of the eye rings. Now, I like to take a pair of needle nose pliers and just remove that nylon support bushing at the end. Well, I almost made a mistake, not something I couldn't correct, but a little easier to deal with in the beginning. Before putting this ring on, slide on a couple of pieces of heat shrink tubing. You want to select two pieces, one that slides inside the other, the outer one cut it in half and slide them on first. Now the reason I cut the outer one in half is we're going to slide the longer narrower piece on first and then slide the bigger one up over and that will go over the eye loop on the end and it will give a tapered double layer and this will add some nice strain relief to the end of that eye. So let's slide these two on first. We'll get them out of the way for now. And now we're going to attach the eye. When I'm placing the eye in my crimpers I like to take the and where they come together that little seam and put it down in the middle of the valley of the crimper and then put the crimper bar opposite that. And we'll just slide that wire in the eye and crimp it. Now the first thing we're going to do is slide the smaller piece of heat shrink tubing up and it will not go over the end of the eye because it's too narrow, but we'll shrink that on. And then when we're done with that, we'll slide the other piece up and then slip it over the eye all the way up to the end for a nice finish. Now my favorite tool for heat shrink tubing is this small heat gun. You can certainly use something like a lighter. I just think that this is a little easier and a lot more forgiving. Okay, now that we got the first piece of heat shrink tubing on, I'm going to slide the larger piece over the smaller piece and work it up over the eye as far as I can. And then we'll shrink that one on. Okay, well, we are halfway there. We did the termination loop. You can do either the overhand knot or secure on a ring eye and um, heat shrink tubing uh, strain relief. Either will work. My preference is this approach. I think it just looks nicer and is probably in the long run a little bit more durable. Now, to get to the other end of the wire, I'm going to have to wrap this 
onto the buddy pole winder. We'll get back to the other end as soon as I'm done with that. Okay, we're back. We got the wire wound up on the buddy pole winder and we have our first end done. We are now going to put the mono plug jack in and then the alligator clip adapter. So that's next step. Now, I don't know how many eagle eyes picked up the fact that I made another mistake, but I've corrected it. Um, and that is I forgot to put the nylon barrel clamps on and I had to unwind all of this, slide the clamps on, then rewind it. Now here's another quick little tip that I use and that is I have a number of these for different pieces of gear and they come in quite handy. And in this case, rather than putting a rubber band or something, I just take a loop of paracord, tie a knot in one end, put another barrel clamp on, and what you do is you just wrap that around the gear that you want to secure, use the barrel clamp as a toggle, put it up tight, and then you can just kind of ratchet it tight, and when you get it as tight as you want, just slide that barrel clamp down, and now you've got a nice way to keep things secure. So this works good for cables and cords and all sorts of things and um, it certainly works very good for uh, this setup for this uh, long wire antenna. You could actually put one on both sides if you really uh, want. So anyway we're more than halfway done. We've uh, completed this end and now we're going to complete this end. Okay here's the next set of parts you'll need. I got these from Radio Shack and I always keep a supply on hand both stereo and mono. In this case, we're going to need the mono, so we'll need the male, and we will need the female. We'll also need an alligator clip, and we're going to need some more heat shrink tubing for strain relief. Again, I get this at Harbor Freight, and I like having a supply on hand. Next thing we're going to need is the uh, soldering iron and some rosin core solder. Let's get the soldering iron plugged in and heated up. Just use a cutting board here for protection. First thing we're going to need to do is strip the end of the wire. Now you can use these simple wire strippers, which I keep one of those in my uh, electric go bag. But the other thing I like are these automated ones. They're just a little smoother. And then we will strip off a small amount. And the first attachment is going to be the alligator clip. All right, we're going to want to pull the jacket off the um, alligator clip. Put that jacket with the heat shrink tubing on last. Put the wire through this little solder hole and then I'm going to go ahead and secure these barbs at the end. Just a pair of needle nose pliers will flatten them out. And the next step is to solder onto the alligator clip. Now the, another piece of equipment that you could get that would be helpful here would be a third hand. Alright, we have the alligator clip soldered on the end of the wire and now we're just going to cut the wire. Again, we'll strip the end of the wire. Now we're going to want to put a heat shrink strain relief on each end. So I'm going to slide that on now. And to make things simple, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and shrink this end on and then put the vinyl cap protector on the alligator clip and then we will work on the mono plug on this end next. Okay, we got the heat shrink tubing on. Now we're going to secure that vinyl protecting cap. Now you might say, how long should I make this adapter? And really it, it's up to you and it doesn't matter. but one thought I just had was if you make it short enough that you can lay it in there then you can secure it down with your paracord and then it just stays with the antenna as a unit. So I'm going to trim this wire, restrip it and then we'll get going. Next step is to apply this female mono plug at the end of the adapter and I am going to want another piece of heat shrink for strain relief so we'll be smart it's easy to make mistakes if you don't uh, think ahead. We'll slide that on first. Another easy mistake is to forget to put the barrel of the jack on 
in other words to get this on and then say how do I get that barrel on so don't forget to put that on first and make sure it's orientated in the correct direction so that when you come back and screw it on you're good to go so we'll slide that on all the way to the end and get them out of the way next step is to solder the wire of the adapter onto the mono plug and then we will secure it down and move on to the rest of the antenna okay I've shrunk the tubing down on that end and we'll just gently apply those crimps and then we slide that cap up and screw it onto the mono plug and there you have a nice adapter alligator clip female mono plug to go at the end of your cable and in this case we cut it so that it'll fit right on the handles there of the buddy pole winder and uh, nice place to keep that always with the antenna next step is to take the end of the antenna put the mono plug on that'll go into the female jack for the alligator clip or plug directly into the radio remember again we're going to want to put a strain relief and two nylon slide clamps and the jacket for the mono plug so let's not forget to put those on okay we're in the final stretch here I slid the larger heat shrink tubing up over the last part and we'll shrink that down last step is to slide the coupling over that mono plug and secure it down you've got a nice strain relief on the end of that mono plug that'll plug directly into the Texon radio or you can take your adapter plug those together and now you can use the alligator clip to attach to any radio with a whip antenna that does not have a separate port for an external antenna all right well there it is that's the big brother to this 50 foot long wire shortwave antenna this is a hundred foot antenna you can make it any length you want here is the alligator clip adapter hanging off at the end here two different terminals that you can use remember you can just tie a loop you don't have to do anything fancy no extra cost or you can make this one with the crimp on ring eyelet heat shrink tubing and a couple of barrel clamps now the purpose of these barrel clamps we'll get into in another movie but they I like to store them on the heat shrink tubing uh, strain relief because it doesn't pinch the wire but when I need them I can slide them off out onto the wire for a short term and this is a strain relief that you can put a loop of paracord and then suspend the wire actually be on this end suspend the wire taut and um, adjust these anywhere on the uh, on the wire so good little tip to add to that uh, long wire shortwave antenna alright this is preparedness month this would be a great preparedness item and the fun thing is you made it yourself be safe